Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this uh, Real Flow for Cinema 4D tutorial, we're going to be looking at the um, rigid deformer and how we can have uh, objects interact with our fluid. Okay, so I'm just going to set up a simple demonstration first of all. So I'm going to create a cube, make it a bit flatter, I'll zoom in a little bit, and uh, let's give this cube a Glider tag that'll do for now, and I'm just going to create a sphere, shrink it down a little bit. There we go, and I'm going to create a go into real flow, go down to deformers, and we're going to choose rigid. It'll create our tree and create this rigid object. Uh, let's just put our display onto that for the moment. And what you want to do is take this rigid body out of here and put it in to our sphere. Now, if I press play, not a lot's going to happen. In fact, let's grab our box and rotate it slightly, just so our sphere slides off. Um, and that's because it, uh, the reason that nothing's happening is because we've got no gravity in the scene. So let's go up to real flow demons and add a gravity demon and then press play. And you'll see that the sphere falls but it doesn't interact with our cube. And that's because if we go to the collider on the cube, there's no links um, to anything. And it's because we created this first and then the uh, scene tree. So it's asking for a real flow scene. So let's drag that in. And it's asking for a link to fluids and whatnot. There is no fluid in there at the moment. so. That's not going to help. Yeah, so you know, if, um, we've got gravity, but there's still no interaction between these objects. And that's because if we look at our collider here, our rigid body has got to be um, seen as a link so they can interact. So if I press play now, great, we've got some interaction between our sphere and this uh, ball. Now you're probably thinking, well, this is kind of pretty pointless, really, because I could do all of that with um, Cinema 4D's built-in uh, tags, but if there was some fluid in this scene, um, Cinema 4D's dynamic tags aren't going to allow allow interaction between this sphere or the colliders on this box to interact with fluids, and so that's kind of the point of this, um, you know, this kind of setup. You could actually have fluids in there interacting as well, but we're going to be dealing with the rigid body. So I'm going to close this scene, and I've already got a scene set up. So uh, let's go to this close. I don't want to save it so that'll close this right okay so I've got a scene and it's already kind of set up I've covered a lot of this in previous tutorials so if you want to learn about uh, collision tags and the demons and all that kind of thing you can check it out on um, my website digitalmeet.uk and you can filter the tutorials via real flow and uh, all those will be there you can also find it on a playlist on my youtube channel uh, it's digital meet so anyway, let me just explain my scene setup. I've got a scene tree here. I've got a gravity in there, like we did a minute ago. I've got a kill volume, which is basically any particles going outside of this box will get killed off. Um, I've covered that in previous tutorials too. And all I've got is some lights to light the scene and my scene objects, which is basically the room itself, a fill object, which is here uh, that I've hidden, and the container. And the container's got a couple of um, tags on it. It's got the uh, collider tag and it's got the volume tag. As I said before, I've actually covered these tags in previous tutorials. So go look at them if you're not familiar. But for now, this is, you know, this is about the rigid deformer. Okay, so first things first, let's get into this. I'm going to um, just turn off my grid because that's kind of annoying. Uh, this fill object, we need to fill it up with a fluid. Um, so we're going to need an emitter. And if we look, we've got a filament already in the scene. So I just got rid of that actually, just so we're back to the beginning. You go to real flow, emitter, fill. We've got a filament in the scene. It's linked to our fluid automatically, but it's going to need to know what object it's going to fill. So we've got this fill object, which is basically this box here. I'm going to grab that and drag this into this field. Um, I'm also going to turn this uh, fill object off. Uh, at least not being visible for render and in the viewport. 
And let's go look at our fluid. It's got a resolution of 15. Uh, it could be less than that if you wanted it to be. Let's, uh, let's make it 10 just so it runs a little bit better. And uh, we'll hit play. Oh, okay. Another thing that I want to do as well. I'm going to go to my scene, um, and actually in the um, in the fluids. Let me just go there first. The fluid display. I crank the particle size up to five. Makes it easier for you guys to see. Um, but I'm going to go to my scene. I'm going to go to the solver. And yes, we are using my um, graphics card, so that's all good. Okay, so that that's all I did. So we've got this fill now, and if I play this, you'll see that these are... Uh, just let that calm down a little bit. So now we've got a body of water. I'm quite happy with it. It's quite stable. So we'll stop that there. Go to the fluid. Go to the fluid here. And then we're going to create an initial, uh, initial state. So we've created that, and we also want to use it. So this has got to be checked on. Now when I go to the beginning, that's its initial state and Bob's your uncle. So now we're going to have it interact with something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a platonic here. I'm just going to drag that up. That's a little bit too big for what we need it for. And I'm just going to shrink this down like this. In fact, uh, let's come, come out of this view and go into this one. Um, yeah, that should be fine as it is actually. Uh, Maybe a little bit smaller, something like that. And just to make it uh, a little bit more interesting so it doesn't look like it has such harsh edges, I'm going to um, make it editable. I'm also going to go into its into edge mode, control A, and then I'm going to bevel these edges slightly just so uh, it looks a little bit nicer. We don't need that many edges either, so let's uh, bring those down. That'll do us. Um, yeah, so we're all good. I'm going to create another material. I'm just going to create a new PBR material. In fact, I can actually copy the one that I've already got here. And we'll call that red. And let's change it to red. There you go. Oh, I'm in the wrong channel there. We want to be in the reflectance, in the layer color. And we'll make this red. So something like that. And we can go into the reflection and make it maybe a little bit shinier as well. And we can whack that on our platonic. And I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, that'll do for now. So we've got this object. Let's bring this down into our um, scene objects here. Now, if I press play yet again, nothing's gonna happen because that is just an object there. So we need to give it a, um, a rigid deformer so let's create a rigid deformer it gets created in the scene tree like before and we need to make this a child of our object so now it's a child we can press play and yet again bugger all's happening and it's because this needs to be linked to the gravity in the scene so if i actually look at this rigid body and go oh yeah it's linked to the fluid great but it's not actually tied to uh the gravity I can actually grab this rigid body and pull it into the gravity. So now it will be affected by it. And now it falls. And you'll notice that it also interacts with the uh, fluid as well. But something else you might notice if we go into this side. Um, in fact, why is it interacting with the fluid? Uh, it's because the fluid was already existed in the scene. So it automatically gets added. If I remove this from my rigid body. In fact, can I put the gravity into the... No, I can't. So, yeah, we did the right thing. We put our rigid body into gravity to say, you know, these things will happen. If we look at our rigid body now and press play, it will fall, but has absolutely no link to the fluid whatsoever. So let's grab our fluid and put it back in. And now that's what causes this lovely splash there. But you'll notice that it goes straight through the fluid and our collider here as well. It doesn't even see it. Bye. And the reason for that is exactly the same reason. If we um, if we have a look at our collider, so this is our container here, and we go to our collider tag. This is the volume tag. Here's the collider tag. We'll go to properties. We've got this link to the fluid, but none to the rigid body. So let's drag our rigid body in there as well, and we can play again. Excellent. So now you'll notice 
if we get back to our other view, that we have a platonic falling into our fluid. Boom. And it kind of bounces on the bottom a little bit, but it remains pretty static. And um, that is because what is actually happening is there's an interaction between two fluids, essentially. Um, that's how real flow figures this out. So if I go into this side view again and then zoom in, you'll see that there's little dots in here and they're particles just like we have in our main container. So if I go to rigid and go to display, we'll crank up the particle size to five so you can see them and you can see there's some particles in there now. And so basically, um, let's have a look at the rigid body itself. Okay, so we've got the resolution, which is the same as you'd get in this fluid here. We've got a resolution of 10. In this, we've only got 0.5. So let's crank this up to 5. And you can already see that the resolution of this object is a lot better now. Um, and it will probably improve the interaction as well. So let's uh, press play. Boom. There you go. And uh, you also notice that uh, we've got a density factor here. Now, this is going to be important in a minute. Uh, Auto collision. I'm going to leave that alone. But um, it... Auto collision simulates the uh, repulsion forces between different objects inside the same domain to avoid interpenetration. Uh, they don't recommend values greater than one. It's already set to one, so let's just leave it there. Um, stiffness. Particles inside a rigid object always tend to maintain their original shape. Uh, values less than one introduce a small amount of elastic behavior. Now, as soon as we're using a rigid body, um, we probably don't want that. You might do, but... I don't in this state, uh, in this case. Right, so that's this dealt with. Down the bottom we've got uh, something called the Skinner. This is enabled by default. It used to be, I think, that um, you actually had to skin this yourself. So uh, if you go to Real Flow Deformers, you've got Particle Skinner here. It kind of does it internally as part of the rigid body tag. So you don't have to worry about this anymore. So basically, um, you know, it fills your object with fluid and then it creates a skin based on your object kind of thing um, and you've got some parameters in there I'm gonna leave these alone to be honest and um, the search distance basically particles within this distance from the object surface inside and outside will be taken into account for uh, the deformation underneath we've got max control particles here you can specify how many particles around an object's vertex are being used to calculate the actual deformation uh, the default value value gives satisfying results in many cases, but if you want a higher precision, um, you can actually crank this up. And outside control particles basically means the demons will only look at ins inside an object for a vertex neighbor's particle. When active, particles outside the object will be considered as well. Again, I'm going to leave that all alone. So in terms of our rigid body, I think we're going to be okay there. But now I actually do want to talk about the density, because obviously you can see that this falls it hits the deck you know it displaces the water it has a little bit of a bounce um but then it's not too exciting really oh and then uh seem to have a lot of action going on with our fluid there we may need to dampen that down a little bit but um this has got a density of a thousand and if we look at our fluid that's also got a density of a thousand so if we want to do something simulate buoyancy we'd have to make our object that's falling into the fluid less dense. So let's half the density and see what happens. So that falls in. I'm not quite sure why our fluid's misbehaving there. Uh, seems to have calmed down a bit now. But it still doesn't look like it's floating too much. If we go into the side view, yeah, we still see it's uh, touching the bottom there, so it's not particularly... So let's... Uh, bring this right down to 200 and uh, go back uh, didn't seem to be much interaction with the water there either and uh, let's have a look at our fluid our fluid probably needs our rigid body in it yeah that would help <laughs> forgot about that yeah so the fluid needs to see the rigid body and the rigid body needs to see the fluid um, and obviously we just talked about the collision data a minute ago. Okay, so let's try that again. Ah, there we go. Now we're getting some floaty action. It doesn't seem to be displacing the water anymore either. So let's uh, rewind and go back. And it's probably to do with its um, 
density. I mean, if I put this back up to 750, it'd probably, yeah, we got some displacement now again. Okay, good, good stuff. So we want some kind of floaty action there. So let's bring that down to 200. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now you can see it's actually bobbing, bobbing on the surface of the water. Let me just come out of the camera. Uh, and the water seems to be pretty calm there. Okay, yeah, so if we go into the side now that you, you can see that it pops down, there's a little bit of buoyancy there. We could even make this a bit more extreme so that we could see, see it even more. So I'm going to change that to 100, go back to the beginning, and there we go. You can see that it's actually bobbing along in the water now. And just to show that you know, this object itself has an effect on the fluid that it's in, and this fluid has an effect on this object. I mean, that's obviously apparent because of its buoyancy at the moment. But um, we can actually add some another demon in here to uh, make this uh, even more clearer. So I'm just going to go back to this view. In fact, I can do it from here. Let's stop this, rewind, and let's, um, let's get a demon in here. So real flow demon and uh, yeah a bit of wind that'll be good so if we drag this up you can see that it's pointing downwards at the moment so let's um, point this to its side like this and uh, well let's just hit play and see what happens first not a lot it's probably not strong enough so let's go to the wind ah there you go so you'll see that the wind has got no link in here at the moment and if we look at the uh, K volume and the gravity, they've got they've got links. So if I go to the wind, I'm going to have to drag my fluid into it. So there we go. So we've got a link to the fluid now. Excellent. Now, I don't know if this actually needs a link to the um, rigid body because this fluid is also inside our rigid but I'm gonna do it anyway so let's go to wind grab our rigid body and we'll put that in there as well so then it's all taken into account and as you can see it's pushing the wind uh, the uh, fluid up slightly there and we don't want that we want it to be a bound effect so let's go to our wind let's crank the strength up to maybe something like 200 there we go, and you can see all the particles coming out the other side now and being killed off. Like that, that's probably a bit too high, so maybe 150, something like that. And it seems to be a constant constant force, but let's bound to this force. So let's take this back to the beginning. I'm going to uh, go into my wind and click bounded. And as you can see, we've got this, um, we've got this cone now. Uh, I'm not actually going to mess around with that too much, I don't think. Uh, no, nope. but you can see that when we press play now, it's completely bounded. But we can actually test if this is, affects our um, our rigid body now by putting it here. And you can see that it did move it off. And just as a little experiment, I actually want to remove the rigid from from this. And and you can see it didn't really have an effect. We can um. We can even crank up the uh, force so it's ridiculous. Something like this. No, it didn't have a, an effect on that at all. So this rigid does need to be inside this wind here. There we go. We've got a lovely effect now. And off it goes. Okay, so let's get our wind strength back down to, I think it was 150. And we can actually put this in the water. Um here oh wrong button sorry guys let's undo that yeah and i can put it there drag it a little back a little bit so that's its sort of influence if you like and uh, let's let's give that a go see what happens oh we've had a crash so bear with me a sec okay sorry about that guys i uh, had a little bit of a crash there that's why it's always important to uh save or incremental save so this is where we're at. We've got the uh, wind with our fluid and rigid in it. We've got our rigid with our fluid in it. 
you know, just to make sure all these things, uh, you know, react together. And obviously our collider's got our fluid and rigid in it as well. So they can all interact with each other. And I've just placed this wind in. So let's just hit play, see what happens. So our object has fallen in the fluid. It doesn't seem to be affected by that wind or the sort of swirl of particles there. In fact, let's hide our wind so we can just get a better view of what's going on. Let's go into our side view and zoom in slightly. And it looks pretty much like it's just sort of sat at the bottom, not doing a lot. So maybe our wind strength needs to come up a little bit. It's a hundred at the moment. Let's put it up to 200 uh, and see what that does. So there's a lot more movement there. And it seems like our density on this isn't working. Now I've had this, I've had this before actually. If we go into the rigid body and just look at the density, set at 150, if I drop it down to 100 and then press play, it seems to react a little bit more correctly. And we can see it's getting caught up in the swell now. Moving around, it's been pushed up. So not only is this affecting the particles, but the particles are affecting it. And that's because in our fluid, we've got this rigid to say that there's a link between, you know, the rigid and the fluid. And in the rigid, we've got our fluid. So there's an effect both ways, if you like, um, you know, the fluid on the rigid and the rigid on the fluid. And that's uh, exactly what we want. So I'm actually going to cache this. I'm going to go to my scene, cache, and I'm going to cache the simulation. And uh, I'll probably speed this bit up. Okay, so our cache is finished. So let's get back to the beginning. And you'll see that we actually have two platonics now, which is a bit confusing. And that's because this rigid is cached. So this sort of this Skinner is cached to up here. And you can see that we've got an object that is completely cached and its movement is cached. In fact, let's have a look at the uh, display. You can see that it's a direct copy of this. So that means uh, if I hid the cached version, well, it's playing now. Um, let's have a look. Well, it's just sort of sat there, which is where, so we actually want to be able to see this one and we can hide this one here. So we can hide that from render as well. And then we've got our cached version. And as you can see, it's getting caught up in the swirl and moving around. Very good. You can see that it has, has a little bit of a struggle at the beginning there. In fact, just to make sure everything's working as I want it to, I'm going to actually go to the scene and um, I'm going to cache the simulation again. Uh, but I'm going to change the density of this rigid body down to something like ridiculous, like 50. And, uh, Let's, let's do that. Let's see what we can get out of that. And actually, let's have a look at our fluids density. Okay. I might even reduce the resolution to 10 just to see what kind of thing we get there. Okay, so let's go back to the scene. I'm going to cache the simulation again. Okay, we've cached the simulation. And as you can see up here, we've got a second cache now. Um, and that looks like that one's been hidden. So I'm going to get rid of that and see what kind of result we get from this. Oh, that's a bizarre turn of events. I think it's getting slightly confused. Yeah, I think it is. So what I'm going to do is go to the scene, remove cache. Yeah, I'll remove the scene cache. And there we go. And I'm going to remove this cache as well and bring our object back. So you can see that, you know, there's still a few things to figure out, definitely. Okay, that's more like it for the density that I've actually got in this rigid body now. I'm just going to turn the rigid off and uh, let this drop. And yeah, okay, cool. Um, I just wanted to do that so I could uh, create an initial, initial state for this again. 
and I can see that we've okay yeah okay so that's good I'm gonna turn the wind off as well while I'm at it just so I can get that initial state calm waters okay so we'll let that chill out for a bit yeah something like that use initial state create initial state go back to the beginning yeah we're all good again so that means I can turn my wind on and my rigid body and we're at 50 I might take that to 100 actually and uh, fluids on 10 yeah okay so let's uh, let's just cache this now then uh, the, the, the scene cache simulation okay jobs are good and back to the beginning again we can see that we got two here we can hide that now and uh, hit play and yeah there we go it's getting swept up in there great so that's pretty much the sort of um, long and short of the uh, the rigid body stuff really um, obviously there's a lot more you can do it you can even have uh, different fluids interacting um, different domains all that kind of stuff uh, and I'm sure we'll go into that at a later point at some times uh, I hope that um, I hope that was helpful for you guys as always you can catch me on uh, digitalmeat.uk uh, and you can find all the real flow tutorials there also on my YouTube channel so like and subscribe that would be great um, you can also follow me on social media Facebook Twitter and the like uh, there will be links in the description and if you'd like to support Digital Me, um, I've got a Patreon page too. It's a dollar a month, uh, some extra content there. And that'll be on screen at the end of the video and in a link in the description. Also, I have a second YouTube channel called Beef Doctor. Um, it's primarily for game streaming. So if you want to see that, check that out too. Okay, cheers for listening, guys. Bye.